an audio leak ahead of Gerben speaks, and alliances rattled, and pandemonium ensues. The German Chancellor is definitely the show stealer of the week. We will tell you all about it, but before that, if you are a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. We publish three videos a day, first at 9.15 a.m. EST, second at 1.30 p.m. EST, and the third at 5.30 p.m. EST. So if you discover that the YouTube algorithm is planning to jump on you while you're asleep, replace your bed with a trampoline. Okay, let's begin. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz might be a fool, but he has proven us wrong. His recent remark, which the media termed a slip of the tongue and we labeled a complete brain fuse, was actually a cry for help. The Chancellor was attempting to highlight his loss of control over the German Bundeswehr as a critique of the UK and France's clandestine operations in Ukraine. So what happened? A 38-minute confidential discussion among Bundeswehr officers, including German Air Force Chief Ingo Gerhards and Brigadier General Frank Graffe, was revealed by RT Channel head Margarita Simonian. The discourse centering on the planned donation of Taurus cruise missiles to Ukraine touched upon strategic assessments for targeting the Kerch Bridge. The officers estimated a requirement of 10 to 20 Taurus missiles to ensure a successful operation. So did the operation have the Chancellor's clearance? Turns out that Germany's top military officers were planning the operation on their own. There may be a possibility that they were acting directly under NATO's command. The reason behind not including or even informing the German Chancellor is that despite mounting pressure for Germany to dispatch Taurus missiles to Ukraine, particularly as Britain and France commit long-range weaponry to Kiev, Chancellor Scholz has maintained a stance of restraint. His hesitance stems from a desire to prevent escalation coupled with apprehensions that in the absence of German operational support, Kiev might deploy these missiles for in-depth strikes within Russian territory, and that means Putin will be mad, mad, mad at Germany. So what did Olaf Scholz do? German Chancellor Olaf Scholz immediately remarked that Germany is reluctant to send long-range Taurus missiles to Ukraine. He said that Germany is doing so as operating these high-tech missiles would require months of training for the Ukrainian military. And then he cheekily added that he cannot emulate the clandestine actions of its allies, France and the UK whose covert troops have been deployed in Ukraine and it is the French and the British troops who are using the missiles and not the Ukrainian military. The result was a complete pandemonium on both sides of the world. Britain accused Germany of quote-unquote misusing important intelligence, which is of course a confirmation of Scholz's allegations, and France intelligently denied its troops' presence in Ukraine. Russia was livid and in the din of the ensuing chaos. German Bundeswehr plan was quietly diffused. It was now Russia's turn. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov summoned Alexander Lambsdorff, the German ambassador to Moscow, to deliberate on the confidential exchange amongst German Air Force officials. The planned assault on the Crimea Kerch Bridge using German advanced long-range Taurus cruise missiles was discussed. A red-faced ambassador, Lambsdorff, came out of Russian foreign ministry and refrained from commenting about what happened inside the room. But it was not pretty, it was evident. Lavrov interpreted the leaked dialogue as indicative of Ukraine and its Western partners' strategic ambitions to subdue Russia, sidelining ceasefire pursuits. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov presented the leaked audio to the world as corroborative of Western direct engagement in the Ukrainian conflict. The exposure of this recorded discussion among German military officials is now being called a significant counter-intelligence lapse, spotlighting vulnerabilities within Germany's military communication security frameworks. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius tried to characterize the incident as a calculated hybrid disinformation maneuver by Russia aimed at fracturing the solidarity among Ukraine supporting nations. But it was all too late, all too stupid. 
Speculation suggests that the timing of the leak was meticulously orchestrated, potentially as a reaction to French President Macron's advocacy for Germany's provision of cruise missiles to Ukraine or as a retribution for the disclosure of the Kremlin files, which the West thinks exposed Russian military strategies. Critics will criticize and alleges will allege, but for now Russia has the upper hand as far as strategic communications go. But Olive Scholes emerges as a weirdly likable guy in this episode, who didn't just pour cold water on his own military's plans, but exposed his allies as well. Maybe Germany is trying to distance itself from NATO's endgame, which is going to be extremely dangerous for the West. If you still don't know what NATO's endgame in Ukraine is, do watch this video.